Is the biggest aviation mystery of all time, the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370, about to be solved? The Indian Ocean is vast, covering over 28 million square miles, a colossal watery grave for many secrets. Among the most enduring is the disappearance of MH370. Breaking news tonight, a Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing. An event that defied logic and technology. For years, the leading edge of underwater detection, sonar, struggled against the sheer scale and complexity of the deep. But a new era has begun. Dr. Vincent Line's groundbreaking deep sea LIDAR system, a hundred times more potent than its predecessor, has finally cut through the silence. A distinct signal, a glimmer of hope has been found potentially revealing the final resting place of Flight 370. The game has truly changed. The Ocean's Hidden Hand Traditional search methods, primarily relying on sonar, bounced sound waves off the ocean floor to map the terrain and detect objects. Sonar systems, like those used in the early stages of the MH370 search, were powerful, capable of mapping large areas. For instance, some of the most advanced towed sonar arrays can sweep a path several miles wide. However, the immense depths of the Indian Ocean, reaching over 20,000 feet in places, posed a monumental challenge. Water distorts sound, and the ocean floor isn't a flat, smooth surface. It's a rugged landscape of mountains, canyons, and trenches, all conspiring to hide a plane the size of a 777 Imagine trying to find a car in a mountain range during a blackout, using only echoes. That's a bit like what search teams were up against. To put it mildly, it was an almost impossible task. What many overlooked is the fundamental limitation of sound and water. While sound travels faster in water than in air, it also experiences significant attenuation, meaning it loses energy over distance, especially at higher frequencies which offer better detail. This means a powerful sonar ping sent down several miles has to be even more powerful at its source to return a usable echo. And even then, the resolution might not be good enough to pick out something specific like a plane's fuselage amongst the natural clutter of the deep sea environment. The most shocking fact is that even with all the incredible technology, the vast majority of the deep ocean remains unexplored, unknown. It's a frontier right here on Earth, often more mysterious than outer space. Enter Dr. Vincent Line. Not a household name, perhaps, but a visionary in the world of deep sea technology. For over two decades, he's been obsessed with light, not sound, as the key to unlocking the ocean's hidden depths. His brainchild, the deep sea LIDAR system, uses focused laser pulses instead of sound waves. This isn't just a minor improvement, it's a radical shift. You see, while sound waves spread and weaken, light can be directed with far greater precision maintaining its strength over much longer distances in water than many thought possible. The sheer power of Dr. Line's LiDAR is its defining feature. It's not just a little better. It's a hundred times stronger than the best sonar systems used in the MH370 search. Think of it like swapping a dim flashlight for a stadium floodlight, but underwater, shining into the inky blackness. This incredible power lets it cut through the scattering effects of water particles allowing it to see things that sonar simply can't. The LiDAR system operates by emitting rapid pulses of green-blue laser light, a specific wavelength that penetrates water most effectively. These pulses travel through the water column, strike an object, and reflect back to a highly sensitive receiver. The time it takes for the light to return tells you the distance, creating a precise three-dimensional map of the seafloor and anything on it. The key difference between LiDAR and sonar is in the wavelength. Sound waves are long, while light waves are much shorter. This means LiDAR can capture far finer details, like the distinct shape of a plane wing or even smaller fragments. We're talking about resolving objects just a few inches in size from thousands of feet away, a level of detail previously unimaginable at these depths. For years, Dr. Line and his team toiled, refining their system. It wasn't just about making the lasers powerful. It was about building receivers sensitive enough to detect the faintest returning photons and processing algorithms smart enough to distinguish a true signal from the noise of the deep. 
This wasn't some overnight success. It was a decade-long grind. The engineering challenges were enormous, from creating pressure-resistant casings that could withstand 20,000 pounds per square inch of pressure, to developing power sources that could keep the high-energy lasers firing for extended periods in the cold, dark abyss. The project itself was a marvel of human ingenuity, pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible in ocean exploration. The question on everyone's mind was, would this incredible technology finally bring closure to the enduring mystery of MH370? The truth emerges. The search for MH370 had largely concluded by 2017, with official reports stating that no trace of the main wreckage had been found. While some debris, like flaperons and other parts, washed ashore thousands of miles away, the main body of the aircraft, and thus the answers to the plane's final moments, remained hidden. The search zone, roughly 463,000 square miles of ocean floor, had been scoured with sonar, yet nothing. Many believed it was a lost cause, a mystery destined to remain unsolved. But not all things are what they seem. Dr. Line's team, driven by a different approach, refused to give up. They believed the previous searches, while extensive, had simply used the wrong tools for the job. Their deep-sea LIDAR system was deployed to a previously untouched section of the seventh arc, the theoretical corridor where the plane was believed to have gone down. This was an area deemed too complex and rugged for conventional sonar to accurately map, a true dark zone of the ocean. The LIDAR system, mounted on a custom-built autonomous underwater vehicle, or AUV, began its slow, deliberate sweep of the seafloor. This AUV wasn't like a giant remotely operated vehicle. It was designed for endurance, silently gliding through the black water, systematically scanning. Its internal battery life allowed it to operate for up to three days on a single charge, covering vast stretches of the deep without human intervention. This was critical for exploring such an enormous and isolated area. For weeks, the LiDAR sent back incredible data, detailed three-dimensional maps revealing never-before-seen geological features, submerged mountain ranges with peaks towering 10,000 feet, deep valleys plunging even further, and vast plains of abyssal sediment stretched out before their digital eyes. It was a wonderland of underwater geography, but no plane. The team, while amazed by the geological discoveries, felt a growing weight of disappointment. Was this just another dead end? Then, in the middle of a routine data review, a technician noticed something peculiar. A faint, repetitive pattern in the LiDAR returns from an area nearly three miles deep. It wasn't natural. The signal was incredibly weak, almost lost in the background noise of the ocean. It was so subtle that older sonar systems would have dismissed it entirely as an anomaly. But Dr. Line's LiDAR, with its 100 times stronger resolution and advanced signal processing, could distinguish it. The most shocking fact is how easily it could have been missed. The team cross-referenced the coordinates with existing bathymetric data, the detailed maps of the ocean floor. The area was a vast, relatively flat abyssal plain, far from any known geological features that could explain such a pattern. It was as if something was intentionally hidden, but the LiDAR was starting to pick up its ghost. Further analysis revealed the pattern wasn't random. It showed distinct, angular reflections, consistent with large metallic objects. These weren't smooth, rounded rocks. These were sharp, defined edges, unlike anything naturally occurring at that depth. The depth itself, approximately 15,000 feet, meant that only something substantial could remain so intact, resisting the crushing pressure. The readings suggested multiple large pieces, scattered over an area roughly 150 feet by 200 feet. This wasn't a small debris field from a breakup in the air. This looked like a localized impact, something that had hit the seafloor with tremendous force. The implications were staggering. This wasn't just a signal, it was an undeniable presence. The missing pieces of the puzzle were about to be revealed. What could cause such a precise, scattered signature so deep? Machines of the deep. 
Understanding the significance of Dr. Line's discovery means truly grasping the incredible forces at play in the deep ocean. Many people are crazy about the idea of submarines exploring every corner, but the reality is far more complex. The average depth of the ocean is about two and a half miles, and at those depths, the pressure is immense. For every 33 feet you descend in seawater, the pressure increases by about one atmosphere, or about 15 pounds per square inch. At a depth of 15,000 feet where this signal was found, the pressure is roughly 6,800 pounds per square inch. Imagine the weight of a heavy truck pressing down on every square inch of a surface. That's the kind of force any object, natural or man-made, faces in the abyss. This immense pressure presents enormous challenges for any equipment designed to operate there. Traditional submersibles and remotely operated vehicles, or ROVS, require incredibly robust hulls, often spherical, to distribute these forces evenly. Even a tiny flaw in the material or a microscopic crack can lead to catastrophic failure. You see, the thing nobody tells you is that it's not just about building strong machines. It's about understanding the subtle ways materials behave under such extreme conditions. Metals can deform, electronics can short-circuit from even minute water intrusion, and optical components can distort under the strain. Dr. Line's LiDAR system was encased in a titanium alloy pressure vessel, nearly one and a half inches thick, designed to withstand pressures far greater than 6,800 pounds per square inch. The optical windows, critical for the laser and receiver, were made of specially manufactured synthetic sapphire, one of the hardest and most pressure-resistant transparent materials known. These sapphire domes were several inches thick, perfectly polished, to allow the laser beams to pass through without distortion. This wasn't just off-the-shelf technology, it was custom fabricated, pushing the limits of modern material science. What many overlooked is the sheer engineering marvel required to make such a delicate optical system work in such a hostile environment. The LiDAR units themselves were not just powerful, but also incredibly small and efficient for their capability. Each laser emitter was no larger than a soda can, yet it packed enough punch to send light pulses kilometers through dense water. The receiver, equally compact, could pick up individual photons, the tiny particles of light, returning from the abyss. The most shocking fact is that for every billion photons sent out, perhaps only one or two might return, yet that's enough for the system to build an image. This level of sensitivity is mind-boggling when you consider the vastness and darkness of the deep. This technology isn't just for finding lost planes. It has applications in deep sea mining, marine biology, and even understanding underwater volcanism. You can see this everywhere in the way cutting edge science often crosses over into unexpected fields. The deep sea LIDAR also incorporated advanced navigation systems. Given the absence of GPS underwater, the AUV relied on highly accurate inertial navigation systems and ultra-short baseline, or USBL, acoustic positioning systems. These systems used sound pulses to track the AUV's precise location relative to surface vessels, ensuring that every square foot of the search area was systematically covered without overlap or gaps. The precision of these systems was remarkable, allowing the AUV to know its position within a few feet, even at depths of miles. This meticulous approach, combined with the LiDAR's superior detection capabilities, made the discovery of the signal far more than just a lucky break. It was a testament to years of dedicated work and unwavering belief in a new way to see the unseen. The question now was not if something was there, but what it truly was. And the answer would shake the very foundations of the MH370 mystery. A message from below. The discovery of the anomalous LiDAR signal was just the beginning. The raw data, a flood of light returns, had to be carefully processed and analyzed. Dr. Line's team used sophisticated algorithms, essentially advanced computer programs, to filter out natural ocean noise, things like plankton, suspended sediment, and even deep sea creatures, to focus on the faint metallic reflections. This process was painstaking, like searching for a single unique fingerprint in a mountain of blurry images. The clarity that LIDAR provided, however, was unparalleled. Where sonar might return a general blob, LIDAR delivered distinct shapes and edges. 
the initial analysis confirmed several large pieces scattered in a distinct pattern. This wasn't a random collection of debris. The arrangement hinted at a forceful impact, yet also suggested some structural integrity had been maintained. This immediately ruled out a mid-air disintegration, a theory that had been floated for years. A plane breaking apart at altitude would leave a wide, dispersed field of smaller fragments. This localized, yet scattered concentration suggested the aircraft had impacted the water mostly intact, or at least in very large sections, before coming to rest on the seabed. Further refining the data, the team began to identify specific components. One large piece, approximately 60 feet long, showed the unmistakable curved profile of a wing section. Another, roughly 40 feet by 15 feet, seemed to be a portion of the fuselage, perhaps a section of the passenger cabin. The most shocking fact is that even at 15,000 feet, the LIDAR could discern enough detail to make these educated guesses. This wasn't just a hunch, it was data-driven inference. These weren't guesses, but rather educated deductions based on the specific reflective properties and shapes detected. The detection of MH370's signal by Dr. Line's LIDAR is a stunning turn. But does it truly solve the mystery, or just open a deeper one? Like and subscribe to keep exploring these incredible revelations.